Hello and welcome to the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider of the Memphis Tiger Network. I'm Jeff Prywell alongside Richard Mulroney. We're going to get to talk about the game here in just a second and the team specifically, but Coach, let's go back to Saturday morning, very special day for both the men's and the women's programs here. You all honored two of the pioneers and Coach Burmell, Coach Bartels, as naming the practice fields after them. Yeah, just a very special morning. You know, Coach Brooks on the women's side and myself have been working on this for a while with obviously the outside help of development. And, you know, unfortunately we lost these two great men in the past year and wanted to dedicate the field to them. You know, they laid a foundation for us. Um, and, you know, the top and the bottom field are big pieces to our program. And to name one of the fields after both of them, it, it was the right thing to do. So we had alumni out, the family out Saturday morning. It was a beautiful morning and uh, we're able to dedicate that field to them. And then rightfully so, right afterwards, our alumni came out and had the alumni game. So it was a uh, good fitting for the guys that played under both of those coaches to, to break that field open after you know we had named it for them and and now is the time you're going to see stuff like this start to come about because to be honest it's the two programs aren't programs that have been around for 75 or 100 years uh, coach Burmell started the program we're talking about as a club team back in 82 so these are still relatively somewhat new programs they've been around for a while but they don't go back the 100 year history of the school absolutely yeah no like i said there's really on the soccer side there's really not a lot of naming rights or this or that but in saying that yeah i do i think uh you know whether it's the top field or our future stadium you will probably see more of this but at the same time for that morning for coach Permel and bartels it was the right thing to do the families enjoyed it our student athletes were out there so it was a it was a very special morning for the programs well later that night you came out for a big one with temple uh, we, we go back to the zero and three start in the league but now you've won four straight overall with that win over temple you're back to 500 in league play. Big win over Temple. You're up one nothing, and really the goal that swung the entire match, a corner kick that, that got to uh, Longo with just five seconds left in the half. Yeah, I mean, it's a 90-minute game, and as I tell the guys, whether it's the first five minutes, last five minutes, last five seconds, play until you hear the whistle, and obviously the guys were able to, uh, you know, get a little iffy if we were going to get something in for that, <laughs> that last play for the corner kick, but in saying that, you know, we're dangerous on set plays, you know, and that was a, an area that we worked on during the week and to reward ourselves for the last five seconds. We've been on both ends. We obviously scored that goal, and it's just a huge relief to get that second goal in the go in the halftime. We've also been scored on late in, in halves or whatever, and it, it sort of, it's a kick in the gut. So um, fortunately, we were able to get that goal second half, or going into the second half, and it gave us a little more confidence to see that game out. You seem pretty calm. I was standing over there behind the bench <laughs> with 18 seconds to go. I was thinking, You've got some time, but you need to jog to the corner. You do need to get it in before the half. Yeah, absolutely. I would have probably had a word or two at halftime if we didn't get that in. But like I said, the boys got it in. And like we always say, you know, when you, for practices at 2, if they show up at 159, you're on time. But it would be better if we got it in a little bit earlier. Same thing with the corner kick there. Got it in. You know, like I said, it's 90 minutes. You have to utilize every second of it. And, uh, yeah, I gave Logan a, an extra high five for that. You've played well defensively all year, but the last four matches, you're, you're – kind of finding your feet offensively, like 10 goals over the last four matches. Yeah, like I said, to get a, a four-goal output this last game, we have been playing well attacking-wise, you know, and I think it was a matter of we finally finished a few more opportunities that uh, we should have been finishing maybe in the previous games, nothing against the other teams that we've been playing, you know, rightfully so, but for us to get four goals in a match, that's usually that should be enough to win games, especially with the way we defend, obviously, J.D. and goal. Um, it was nice to finally see that offensive output instead of, you know, biting your nails at the end of the game. It's 2-1, we're trying to hold on, or 3-2 to get that fourth goal to see that sort of game out was comforting, but it was the, it was the right result. Uh, get a couple of award winners this week. Logan Longo, your defensive player of the week, then Lineker back on the honor roll. Yeah, Logan's been great. Like I said, he's been steady Eddie on the back line of that right side. Um, he's dangerous in the air. He's great in the air on goal kicks. He wins a lot of them, two, four in against us. And then on set plays, too, like I said, yeah, he's you know, he got one earlier in the year in practices. He usually gets one or two during the week. You know, as, as I've told him before, right place, right time with the timing. I wouldn't be surprised for him to get more this year, and I hope that happens. But in, in saying that, he's been a good, solid player for us, and I'm, good to, I'm happy to see him get rewarded for his play, not only for the attack and the goal, but, his, uh, but for his defending on, on the defensive end as well. Hard to believe now we're at the point you've got two matches left. You're at home Friday night against USF. Next Wednesday, you'll go to Charlotte. Now you're sitting at a point, and we're not hiding anything. Players talk about it. They see things. I know you need to concentrate on the game Friday and don't need them looking two weeks ahead. But the fact is, with two matches left, 
couple things on the line. Number one, a chance for a home conference tournament match over uh, at the Murphy Complex. And also, you're, you're very much in the hunt for a second straight NCAA. Sure. Yeah. Like I said, all those are on play. And, you know, three or four weeks ago, we were in dead last, mm -hmm. you know. And it was just like, instead of talking about conference tournament and this and that, let's win our first game. The guys have good, put a good run together. We're confident right now. And I think we're still trying to stay on that same mindset of next game up. Let's take care of that. USF has been a tough team for us over the past forever, to be honest with you. There's never an easy game. We understand that they're behind us, but one win against us, they hop us and we can't catch them because they can control their own destiny. So a lot playing on it. We obviously know USF is going to come in. They won their last game versus UAB, I believe. So it's truly up to us, that next game mentality, to make sure that we just show up, compete, and obviously three points are at a premium, but at the same time, let's just make sure we have a good week of training and, and give us a, ourselves the best opportunity to get those three points before leading into our last game at Charlotte. I was going to say, the, the premium is on the results at home right now because that's not going to be an easy trip to Charlotte, as good as they are. No, we didn't go there last year. Having said that, will be a, a new trip for us, and Charlotte's in front of us as well. So... Yeah, to finish our, our schedule out against these two opponents, there's no easy games. But having said that, USF speaks for itself, and obviously Charlotte, what they've done this year also. Yeah, our, our work's cut out for them, but we're playing at a high level right now. We've got confidence. I believe we can get results, whether it's at home or on the road. I think the guys believe that too, but now it's just a matter of, of you know walking the walk in terms of playing those games and, and getting a result. All right, hoping for a big crowd out there. They need you this, uh, you need them this Friday. That would be great. You know, like I said, this last game was great. It was alumni weekend. The alumni came out at the same time, get as many student athletes out there as possible. Guys are playing at a high level. It's fun out there and we'd, uh, we'd appreciate any support we can get by getting as many uh, fans, fans in, the, in the stands. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Thank you. That is Head Coach Richard Mulroney. I'm Jeff Brightwell with the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network.